Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And this evening, we are going to be talking about, well, I think the screenshot here says it all, National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan. Uh, this report was actually prepared on June of 2018. It is an interagency working group for detecting and mitigating the impact of earthbound near-earth objects. And uh, really, I'm bringing this issue to forefront for several reasons. One, needing to update you guys. You know, we've done so many videos about the things through the different uh, sources that we have, uh, trying to share with you the things that they've shared with us. And of course, you know, along the way, uh, we need to update you as time goes on. I haven't updated any in a while on this issue. And of course, I'm getting a lot of trolls out there. First, I started getting the trolls of, uh, you prophesied in September we're going to get hit by an asteroid, so if it doesn't happen, then we're going to consider you a false prophet. Well, I corrected that issue right off the bat, because prophecy is when the Lord tells you something, that's considered to be prophecy, but if it doesn't come to pass, then you know it's a false prophecy, right? I have never claimed that the Lord has told me anything about asteroids coming in. I have clearly stated over and over and over, and I will share from the videos themselves some of the things that I've actually stated in there, uh, and I'll be using specifically three videos tonight, uh, where I have stated over and over, there, there's no guarantee of dates and times and things. Uh, and back in March, it wasn't a matter of asteroids were going to hit in March. It was an event, but never disclosed what the event was. Uh, it wasn't until I had another source, uh, a contractor with the Pentagon, that claimed that they knew what that event would be. We'll go into that tonight. Uh, but the trolls from the Flat Earth community are just really, really unbelievable. And it's sad because I know not all Flat Earthers are like that. And I have always tried to show respect to the Flat Earth community. In fact, in March, when I first spoke about this, uh, because of knowing people in the Flat Earth community, I really wanted to be sure, knowing that many of these people followed this channel, followed this ministry, and had become Flat Earthers maybe sometime later in life while they were already following before they were Flat Earthers. So in that video there alone, the one from March 15th, I actually said three times in that video at the five uh, minute, eight second mark, I spoke about the flat earth community, not wanting to offend them, but only trying to help, right? I again uh, spoke a little later in the video about midway through. I see I've got, I've got the timestamps on everything here. Uh, uh, 11 minute and 45 seconds. Again, speaking kindly about the flat earth community trying to show respect for their beliefs. Uh, and then uh, near the, uh, the end of the video as well, uh, let's see here, uh, forget exactly where it's at. No, I've, got, I've got it all written in here though. Um, but again, I showed uh, kindness and, and care and concern about the Flat Earth community three times because I went back and listened to the video to see for myself what was said. And always trying to show respect. But there are a massive number of trolls that are flat earthers. We've had to block them. I hate to say it, we just have to block them because no respect the other way around. And even later, when I was really getting upset uh, originally over all these trolls coming out, I even again tried in a different video and I was speaking about these things. I said, look, I said, you know, I'm only trying to help people. I said, even if you're, if you don't believe that there are asteroids, if you believe that it is uh, the part of the dome and it's breaking apart and going to hit the earth, I don't care how you believed it. My desire, and you can see it in that video, my desire was always to try to help people about what's coming. And we'll get into these things. I'm even going to show the quote there. I even say in there, because people say, oh, you're telling everybody to move. No, I even said on there, when it comes to the asteroids about moving, it doesn't really matter. There is no safe place. I've said that in multiple videos. But I actually have the timestamp here marked on it. All right? So we're going to get into that tonight. And I'm going to update you on a lot of things that scientists are saying, especially about 
2020 in asteroids. But it wasn't just asteroids. That was the other thing. It was weather. I, I, I shared with you actual excerpts from the email portion, not the conversation, but the email portion, sharing with you those things about, because the first time this was revealed to me, yes, it was talking about a, a, a an, an asteroid cloud is actually what it's called. I called it an asteroid belt, but it's like a cloud. And uh, later that was more explained to me as time went on exactly what that was. Uh, but that the biggest issues it was focused with with my original source on this information was the weather changes that we would see. And this system, I was told, is a cause of that. Now, I've had multiple guests on to try to bring more balance to this. Uh, I had Robert, who had gone over Farada's documents uh, in this video right here, here, right here. Uh, Robert was kind enough to come on. The audio was not that great, but Robert, wonderful brother, who had the privilege of reading Farada's notes. He speaks Spanish. He was in the Navy. He has a passion for uh, this. Uh, the, the, Farada called it a binary system. He, or I think I think that's what, or no, Farada calls it uh, herboculus, and he spoke about this as a planet comet has an elliptical orbit. We had Scott Sion on with Planet X News and Scott also with a different perspective. I was wanting to give you guys a balance in these things, not just one side of the of, of the idea. Scott believes that Planet X has already come in and he got caught in the orbit around the sun. And he, he uh, from his own information and with his wife and from the scientific perspective that he brings out, uh, very persuasive information of what he's saying. Uh, however, my one of my sources disagrees completely. Actually, probably two or two of them disagree with Scott completely. But I don't discount the fact of Scott's expertise, his wife's expertise, and what they have to say. I want it to be objective for you people, our friends that listen to this broadcast. All right. And then I began to think about this even more. And I've said this many times, but I haven't actually pulled these scriptures up for you because what's interesting, especially in light of the fact that my uh, first source, uh, who works with the Pentagon, also has stated there would be earthquakes, increase with earthquakes, hurricanes. You would have, uh, he didn't call it a dratio storm, but he talked about over 100 plus mile an hour winds. It would be up around Nebraska, through the Midwest and stuff. And since that one dratio storm came through, that actually some people said it had up to 140 mile an hour gusts, 110 mile an hour sustained winds. He said that was just the beginning. And then another one comes through with 100 mile per hour winds. 40 tractor trailers overturned as a result. All right. So these were things that I was, that was being shared with me back then. I was sharing with you and he only stated that come September, there wouldn't be a person on the planet that doesn't know we're in serious trouble. And I think because he didn't say what it was, it was actually the friend of mine that's a um, contractor for the Pentagon that claimed that what would the event that we would be able to see is that the binary system you'd be able to see with the naked eye. And there are a lot of people claiming that they can see the binary system now. I don't say that they're right. Just as I've stated many things like that in the, in the videos that I've done before, or I would say... It may not, I, I can't say that the timing is right. You'll see these things tonight. All right. But in light of these things, uh, I want to share with you scriptural evidence. This is Jesus from Luke chapter 21. Let's begin with verse 10. He says, then said, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation. This is just like Matthew 24, right? Kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Notice that in the blue. Fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven? Well, I don't know. Maybe there might be an asteroid coming or something, or maybe there's one or two or three or four or five. I don't know how many. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. All right, let me just show something to you on that issue there, the, 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 the wars, right? In this video here, let me see. i got to find where I have this out now. Let's see. Um, 
uh, this video right here, where do I see this? Okay, at 10 minutes and 30 seconds, roughly right in that area, I speak about these wars, but specifically the wars that are going on, you have to remember, I was told by my own source there that there were three places on the planet outside of the United States, only one place in the U.S., but three places on the planet, Central Africa, Israel, which also included parts of Syria, and Central China were considered safe zones. Now, at the time that I was told this, I didn't know necessarily the details of what that meant. And I didn't, you know, I figured it was more safe zones from asteroids, but I also knew that it, later it was clarified to me. It wasn't so much the asteroids because there could be impacts there as well. It's because those parts of the earth, including that like uh, in the Ozark Mountains where John Moore lives, the earth's crust is very thick. And so it's, it's less likely that the earthquakes can split the earth open in those places. That got clarified to me a little bit later. Um, so in this video here, I didn't go into that. But I noted, though, how that we, in all those areas there, nations are warring over those places. Listen to this. It's going to be for the salvation of souls. That's one thing that the elitists are not really worried about in the first place. Because the elitists, they have their own Messiah coming. Their AI serpent Messiah. I'm not interested in some holy serpent that is going to be presented by the elitist rabbis of Israel. And by the way, as far as the third temple, it's already built. It's just underground. And it's underground for a reason. Just like the wars that are going on around the world. And, and even this issue on the third temple, that there, there are differing opinions on that. And that was just something that I was told, but not through intel. Uh, and that, another thing that just came to me recently uh, is that a friend of mine in Israel is supposed to be working, uh, be, actually be working on the construction of the third temple. But he mentioned underground bridge uh, that a friend of his will be working on uh, as part of the temple project there. So, I don't know for sure. I just, these are things that I've been told and I don't know if they're true or not. I'm only sharing those things. But anyway, I was trying to get to the point there and I don't know, maybe I missed it. I thought it was 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Maybe it wasn't. Let me back up a little bit and see. No things. Some things, I can't go into every single detail than anything else from this day forward after we make this broadcast is going to be for the salvation of okay, Or in the case here, the China versus such as the Middle East, such as Africa, as I have here pictured here, Russia based in Central Africa on the table while U.S. refocuses its strategy. Or in the case here, China versus the U.S. struggle for Central Africa and the Congo. There are reasons for all these conflicts. Even Hong Kong versus China. What's all the fighting about? Well, you might read this article, but it's not going to tell you what the real reasoning is about. And just like there's this big issue over, well, you have... Mm -hmm. All right, and what that was going into is because, like I said before, those were considered the safe areas. So it was kingdom fighting with kingdom, nation against nation. And Russia, too, by the way, is in the middle of this fight for the Congo area. So when we read this, I think it's very interesting. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, famines and pestilence, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven, right? All these things are that, that, that was being said to me there. And just as a reminder, we'll go there. Let me, let me just remind you what the source I had said on this stuff about the natural disasters. We go to 18 minute mark, 55 seconds. It should be about where it's at. So let's try about 1850 and listen to this all the things that are happening that we are going to suffer from earthquakes, wind problems, followed by, uh, excuse me, that we're going to deal with earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, and winds of over 100 miles per hour. Because it's not a climate change as a result of 
CO2 emissions as we're being told, but rather the Earth is uh, absorbing such a huge amount of radiation that the core of the Earth is heating up from within. And that was being caused by, from what I understand, being caused by this system that we are uh, now going in. I've actually been told since all this time, uh, starting in June, we've entered into that, uh, that system. And it's one reason why uh, more and more they're seeing asteroids that are just popping up that they didn't catch before. Uh, much like they had with this one right here in Russia. Remember this one here in Russia? Let's, let's take this as a reminder, right? Because on November 2nd, we have an asteroid coming in that's not much different in size, a little smaller than this one, and it's going to be very close. They say within 300 miles of the Earth. Some say it'll have an impact, others say it's not, but there's a lot of buzz in the news about it. Let's, let's, let's watch the one from right in Russia that happened. Dash cams in Russia record a 10,000 ton meteor streaking through the sky. If nobody knows it's coming, because of the path that this thing was on, it was too close to the sun for our detectors to know it was there. You don't know if it's a missile. You don't know if it's a plane coming down. You don't have any idea what it is. This had to have been absolutely terrifying. I mean, it, imagine yourself standing outside. You see something streaking across the sky. You have no idea what it is, what direction it's going, and what's going to happen next. The heat generated from the dramatic plunge through the atmosphere is breaking apart the meteor. And suddenly, it explodes in a ball of fire nearly 15 miles above the Earth's surface. All right there. So that's what happened in Russia, and they could not detect it because they said it was coming from the direction of the sun. Okay, so there are things happening that cannot be detected. But going back to the storms and things, I was told that there was going to be all these increase of everything. All right, here we have 2020 season. This is on uh, kbtx.com as Hurricane Sally bears down on the Gulf Coast. 2020 season continues at a record pace. Record pace. And they give you some of the statistics. Sally is the seventh hurricane of the 2020 Atlantic season to date. Only six years have had seven plus hurricanes by September 14th. Six other years in the history and we're not done yet. And in fact, the uh, Hurricane Laura, when it hit over there near Texas, it was breaking records. All right, what else do we have there? The powerful Dracho leaves path of devastation across the Midwest. Good friend of ours, Jessica and her husband, they sent me photographs of, of trucks flipped over on the interstates. And that was not the only one. There was another storm. I don't know if they called it a dratio or whatever, but it still had 100 mile plus hour winds with 40 18 wheelers that were overturned. And this crossed several states. Nebraska, which by the way, I never mentioned it in that broadcast there, but it was written in the letter, Nebraska being one of those states that, that actually this uh, was told that these winds would actually take place. Maybe it wasn't in the letter. Maybe it was actually we were having a, uh, a private communication. Uh, but nonetheless, and even after the Dracio storm happened, this was on August the 11th, right? Or at least that's when they reported this, August the 11th. I was being told this in back in March. And then I was told it's not the last ones you're going to see either. And then next thing you know, another one happens. Okay. Then we have uh, this, let's see. Nearly 100 earthquakes swarm Yellowstone in 24 hours. Here's what experts are saying. And there's other things talking about tremendous number of earthquakes. Now, in fairness, Scott Seelan says a lot of this is caused from the solar minimum. Mountain sources claim the same thing. Yes, solar minimum is impacting a lot of the earthquakes that we're having. Jesus said it, though, too, right? Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Then he says in famines. But we got two different kind of famines because Jesus said it won't be just a famine. Maybe it wasn't Jesus. I forget who said this now. I'm just I'm quoting it to Jesus. But not just a famine for, for bread and water, but for hearing the word of God. And we're going to get into that too as we go on through this whole issue because that's also the problem. Now notice though, 
But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons. Now, we could apply that back to the times of Jesus as well. There were earthquakes. I don't know what kind of signs they would have had from the heavens. But there were famines. Rome came in. We could, we could argue that these things were happening back then, but it's going to happen again. Because why? The beast kingdom has risen up again. And so therefore, they're going to deliver you back up to the synagogues, to the Sanhedrin council. And you will be uh, persecuted and punished and tried and beheaded because of Noah Hyde laws. So think about it. Now, let me take you a little further down in Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. What? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You know, the elite are very terrified of what's coming as well. This is why the president has this plan here, a strategy and an action plan. And I've been given details about this plan. Some of that I'm not going to discuss here. You, you already get you get mocked at and everything else. Uh, so I just I'm not going to discuss it. Then you have Hebrews chapter 10. And this is what I find interesting. Because when it talks about delivering you up to the synagogues, this is as a result of those that will forsake Jesus Christ. In fact, this is also where it says right here. Let's just, let's add this one here. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The coronavirus caused the churches to be totally shut down. Tell me the writer of the book of Hebrews didn't see, or maybe God somehow revealed this was going to happen and then you would forsake the assembling of, of yourselves together. As you see the day approaching, and we're coming to that day. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and what fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How did they die? Stoning. Is that right? The book of Revelation chapter 16 speaks about hail raining down out of heaven about the size of a talent. I don't know how much weight that is, but it's pretty doggone heavy. Think about it, friends. Think about it. So at any rate, the article originally that I got uh, this from was from IntelliHub about the president's uh, presidential national near earth ob ob uh, object plan there. They also put out an article too, and that's how I found that article. Uh, on August 11th of 2020, government insider claims DOD is preparing for a loss of infrastructure due to climate change. Interesting, huh? Department of Insider revealed the DOD International has de designated climate change as a threat to its operations and infrastructure and warned that something may be fast approaching. I wonder if that's the same uh, individual that uh, Marfugel News uh, had, uh, was their source they were using. Uh, I'd actually had the privilege of speaking to his source uh, with, with his blessings. And uh, so I just find that interesting. All right. Then, but there's a lot of other things out there as well. Right. This is on the Express. Terrifying NASA map shows increased count of near-Earth asteroid video. Now, it says the NASA footage shows an increase in count of near-Earth asteroids since 1999 in an animated map of the solar system. All right, I'll just kind of let it play here while, while, while we talk about these things here. Now, naturally, we've got all kinds of objects out there. Okay? Notice the difference, though. Let's, let's just stop this for a second. Let me back it up. The animation 
represents a map of increased count of all known asteroids in the solar system between January 1st, 1999 and January 31st, 2018. Blue represents near-Earth asteroids. Orange represents main belt asteroids between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. All right, well, let's just keep that in mind. Now, as, that, as this plays, it starts showing you, but let's watch what happens here. I find it interesting. No near-Earth asteroids, January 1st, 1999. Look how many there, I mean, we can't tell. All right, now it's about 2009. Now look at the number of them. Then they're going to give him a 2018. Now look at it. Maybe that's just because they're finding a bunch more. I don't know. All right, but the one thing, though, that we're not, you don't, that a lot of people don't realize is that, and I don't even have all the articles up here, but we have had countless uh, what was it, June and July? We had so many near-Earth asteroids coming by, like in one day, they had three come by in one day. And they're constantly discovering new ones, and sometimes it's not until it's too late. Like in the case of well, Russia, they, nobody picked that one up, it just, boop, it was there. Right? Another thing, this is on Gizda, uh, uh, Gizad Earth, uh, Earthstar.com of asteroids and shut down telescopes. Yesterday, you'll recall, I blogged out the fact that the Arcebio radio telescope in Puerto Rico has been shut down. This, by the way, is on August 19, 2020. This is just a few days ago. To a clabbling failure and accident that looks to me more like an act of sabotage and a cabling failure. In an entertaining that speculation, I asked who would do such a thing and why? Well, perhaps as part of a wider pattern of FLMM spotted the following article and passed it along. Thank you. And it leads off with the uh, RCBO story. All right. That's this right here. Number of telescopes government nations shut down amid increased asteroid threat. That's how I got to IntelliHub. <laughs> anyway, now while I am relatively skeptical of this particular news source for reasons I shan't get into here. Let's assume its accuracy for the sake of some high octane speculation. There's two takeaways from this. Takeaway number one, defying all logic and number of telescopes and observatories around the world remain closed amid the coronavirus pandemic, while the impact risk of near Earth east, uh, earthbound objects remains at an all time high. And you can't say IntelliHub is all bad either because they got that uh, they got that document right there dead on. All right. Over 100 telescopes have been reported to have been shut down in a move that virtually makes no sense. And now one of the world's largest radio telescopes named the RCBO Observatory has been rendered inoperable after sustaining damage after cable unexpectedly snapped, creating about a 100-foot-long gash in the dish itself, furthering fueling the problem. So, you go down a little further. In fact, the White House put together and released a plan in the summer of 2018 to prepare for and to mitigate an increased number of near-Earth-bound asteroids, which pose a threat to the planet. They alerted other countries to their general plan, which also involved the formation of international working groups, as reported by IntelliHub in a report dated April 7, 2020, titled Our uh, Active Presidential Level National Near Earth Objection Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan Revealed. At a minimum, the report reveals the world governments are actively preparing for what looks like some type of incoming natural disaster, disaster which a U.S. government insider touched upon when she called into the Shepard and Bella show on Monday. The Department of the Interior employee, okay, so it was not uh, the one that uh, Marfugo would be using. Department of Interior is different. Named Becca called the Shepard and Bella show Monday, where she said that the Department of Defense sent out a bulletin which states that the department is preparing for and expecting to sustain damage to infrastructure due to coming climate change scenarios. Now, it might be asteroid, might not be. I don't have no idea what that, what that would be. 
but they're still planning on it. The Department has already revealed the DOD internal has designated climate change as a threat to its operations and infrastructure and warned that something may be fast approaching. All right. We also have here, May 5th, 2020. Are we seeing an increase in asteroid close calls with Earth? While everyone was waiting to see if 1998 OR2, that's where they named the asteroid, by the way, the date that it was discovered, might go off course and slam into Earth, a small asteroid named 2020 HS7 made a much closer flyby, passing just 26,550 miles above Earth. It was so close that it passed below a geostationary satellite, missing it by 750 miles. Not to be outdone, asteroid 2020 JJ gave astronomers no advance notice. See, JJ was discovered in 2020. JJ was discovered as it zipped past Earth on May 4th at an elevation of just 4,350 miles. JJ is no longer than 20 foot in size, so it likely would have burnt up in the atmosphere. So it's about a, what would that be, about a third of the size of the one that went over Russia. The top 10 closest approaches have all come since 2004. This could be a result of astronomers getting better at spotting and tracking asteroids, or it could be that there are some more and more asteroids making close approaches. 2020 has been a busy year already for close approaches. 2020 is the 40th known asteroid to fly within one lunar distance, flying between the Earth and Moon since the start of the year, and the second this month. 2019 had a 67 asteroids pass within one lunar distance, but only 20 by May of last year. So notice that. Last year in 2019, only 20 LDs flew past the Earth by May, as compared to double that number in 2020. There were 47 close flybys in the last seven months of 2019. We've seen another 40 close passes in the first four months of 2020. So even before May, notice that, more than double the number of close, more than double in 2020. We've had 87 near misses in the past 11 months. Is the frequency of flybys increasing? Is this the beginning of of an asteroid storm like the one described in the fictional novel Asteroids, Bridge to Nowhere? Huh. They don't go any further in saying on that. But the fact that we have had an increase is a scientific fact. There's no way to, to, to ignore this. This here is on Sputnik News, Russian News. Scientists warn of steady increase in asteroid impacts on Earth. One of the scientists involved in the study pointed out that although the number of space rocks striking Earth is increasing, the probability of an asteroid strike wiping out mankind is extremely low. They go on to say over time, these rocks get bombarded by sunlight. and There is a process which re-emits this energy and basically gives these fragments a tiny nudge, which can then send them on a collision path towards Earth. It is a bit like a rising tide. You have a lot of material coming out of the asteroid belt at one point. Dr. Gernon said. All right. Now. Here at Nature's Bakery, we baked up a philosophy. Delicious food, that's where we free. Real fruit, whole grain, soft baked. I can't forget to smile. Ah, ah, ah. It's better when you bake it with a smile. Okay. I don't know where we got the music from, but. Too many windows open. Earth is about to face close encounters with five gigantic monsters. Now, this is still an older article, but it just goes to show how much this was happening. This is back in January 2020. Five terrifying huge asteroids are coming our way and are due for close encounters with Earth in the coming weeks, NASA has revealed. That happened multiple times this year. And as I showed you... Here in Nature's Bakery, we found the perfect place for thinking up a brand new way of baking up ingredients it takes to make your everyday amazing real fruit, whole grains of soft baked up. We know which, we know which website's doing it. <laughs> anyway, but the point is, is that we've already 
we've already shown you the evidence that we are having uh, in this article right here on May 5th, 2020, more than double what we had in 2019, same time. CNN also speaking about in a year that seemingly keeps on giving, perhaps it is not surprising that NASA newly discovered asteroid called 2020 SW will give Earth a not so socially distant past. Discovered on September 18th in Tucson, Arizona, the school bus sized asteroid, which is estimated to be somewhere between 15 to 30 feet in diameter, is expected to graze past our planet's surface with about 13,000 miles of breathing room. All right. No, it didn't hit the Earth. But the problem is, we do have one coming. Experts say near-Earth asteroid due to come within 300 miles of Earth on no in November, not a concern yet. And that all depends on who you listen to. This is the one that the possibility has been raised of a false flag event and blaming it on this asteroid here in the United States right before the elections. And don't forget, the U.S. has that technology to do so. As we can see here on the website, wearethemighty.com, these are Air Force rods from God could hit with the force of a nuclear weapon. They can make it look like an asteroid just struck. Just like we have weather weapons, we have the harp, we have all kinds of things. So is man creating these storms? Jesus already said, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There should be earthquakes and famine in diverse places. Could it be that he was also alluding to the fact that those could be man-made? Or is it the fact that real things are going to come? I think it may be a combination of both. All right, let me look, let's go back to some of the videos here. I'm going to get into this in just a moment. Um, let me just see what we have here. Okay, nearly, okay, we already got into that, so we'll just leave that right there for a moment. Now, because there's so much nonsense going on about, oh, what Steve said, wow, oh, what Steve said. Let me just show you, though, at the five-minute mark here in addressing Flat Earthers the respect that we gave to the flat earth community that we did not get and have not been getting with the trolls. Information I shared with you a little while back when we were talking about Nibiru. And I know my flat earth friends do not believe in Nibiru, at least from what I understand they don't. Maybe I misunderstood that. So if I misunderstand, please forgive me. Right? Kindness constantly shown. All right. Anyway, so we go on. I also, at the eight-minute mark in this video, I get into 5G to be let out while we were on lockdown and how it would be infringing on our civil rights. We've seen that a lot happen as well. Um, I speak about at the 940-minute mark, the dangers that we live under ourselves, the threats for, because of revealing the things that we speak about here. Uh, and at the 10-minute mark, one of the main things I get into, this is the reason why it really upsets me with the way people are reacting, right? My biggest concern was, was the gospel. Because I think more things. than ever in the age that we're living in now, and what I am really going to focus on more so than anything else from this day forward, after we make this broadcast, is going to be for the salvation of souls. That's one thing that the elitists are not really worried about in the first place. Because the elitists, they have their own Messiah coming. Their AI serpent Messiah. Okay. Um, when I get into any date at all in this, is in the 14-minute mark, but I'm talking about what was on a memory stick that I had received. Okay his information, an estimated time of 2023. As far as Planet X goes, that is. Uh, and its arrival into our solar system. I know that there is also a... And see, and as you notice, I spoke about his information. That was the man that had given me the memory stick, right? At the 21-minute mark, 
I speak about the safe zones and how they how even they can get hit. So it doesn't mean that they're just safe. Um, hang on. At 24, and this is another interesting point as well, 24 minute mark, just briefly, I mentioned John Moore. Great. And according to what I was told as well, and we've heard so many of this, this information, and probably made most famous of all by none other than John Moore, is the United States. And what John Moore brought up, that I bring up in this, this particular article right here, is sharing with the world the U.S. naval intelligence map where because of a polar shift, the coastal lines would be totally changed. Totally changed. And yet nobody seems to be trolling John. And they shouldn't because the man has spent his the last 10 years of his life trying to warn people about what he believes is coming. And again, John, like ourselves, based on the information that has been given to him, believing that this would be what was going to happen. All right. When you get into the, the, in this particular time frame, too, we talk about, uh, you know, uh, the impacts, but I go into the 25 30 minute mark. Let me get back over here. And I talk about relocation. And does it really even matter? Listen. Maybe. We know that God knows what's coming. And that might be when a lot of his saints go home to be with the Lord. So needing to change location probably doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that our lives are in order with the Lord. How simple can that be? Also at the 26 minute mark, just a few minutes later there, I remind people that the things that are in this, that, that I was being told is based on probability. No guaranteed dates. Again, this is all based on uh, a probability, not on exact facts. Three to six months is probably what we have left. Now, the thing is, I go into other videos after this. I explain that three to six months. I was told, and I actually shared the letter as well, that he would know more after that time. But the three to six months was if you're going to move that would be your window that you would have time to move in. Now, in this video, I didn't go into that details like that, but I do videos very close to the same date here. You go back, you listen to it, you find out that I saw exactly what I speak about. You had three to six months. If you're going to relocate, relocate during that time. Now, I find out later, though, that's because the coronavirus pandemic had a lot to do with this because he knew they were going to lock the people down and you would not be able to move. And that time is fast approaching. All right. It wasn't that, oh, we're going to be struck with an asteroid. It was the fact that this is your window of opportunity to relocate if you want to relocate because the time will come through the coronavirus and you have to take many different videos that we've done on this where we talk about that issue and you see it, see that, that that was your window of opportunity. All right. And uh, I know that when I did have the phone conversation at that back then, he also said six months later, I'll have a better idea of when things, what things are going to be, when are, what are they looking at? And of course, when I did, I did speak to him not too long ago, he talked about, you know, as far as major issues, they're a couple of years out. Uh, if you go to 28 minute mark, I speak about that we may have still have time. Nothing was set. Nothing is set in stone when I speak about these things. Today. And that right there. And while we have time left, 
We'll need your help in doing so. And we appreciate your help, the kindness that you've shared, shown to my family. And again, who knows? Maybe there's more time. We don't really know. I don't have any dates or anything like that for you, anything of that nature. All I can tell you is that we are living in a very serious hour, and the elitist... Maybe you need to hear that one more time. Okay? I have any dates or anything like that for you, anything of that nature. All I can tell you is that we are living in a very serious hour. Okay? We don't have any dates. When I said September, I was told originally, June, July, you will begin to see the weather changes. September, I was told, it, we would be at a point to where the world would know we are in serious trouble. Now, at the time, my own contact in the Pentagon, he never expressed to me what that, what, what is it that we're all going to know? It was the source that I had that was a contractor for the Pentagon, the generals he knew that actually later tells me that we would actually be able to see this system coming. Um, my FEMA engineer said that we would start seeing the asteroids hitting the Earth in September. And there are claims that little ones. And of course, the FEMA engineer did say it would be small ones in the beginning. Never said it'd be big ones. Much like what Robert says in this video right here. Uh, wrong video. This one right here when I interviewed Robert. And let me see if I can find that for you. Let's just see. Both in Washington, D.C., uh, in the Pentagon, Pact. If you notice on here, he's talking about towards the end of the year. Now, he's only quoting Farada's notes that he had. But he also, Robert stated, Farada had changed his original writings. He thought 2010 would be the year. Then right before his death, he did his calculations again because he was monitoring the movement of this. He worked at the observatory. He had the access. And then he updated it, and he spoke about 2020. And that that would be when we would begin to see the outer bands coming in. And it would slowly build up. All right? That's in this video. Trying to give you different perspectives of what we were seeing and hearing again. Um, also, in this video here, or not this video here, but the original video back in, and the 29-minute mark, 2940, actually. Uh, I spoke about them running you out of your ammo. That was from Israeli intelligence. I don't actually clarify that here, but that's where that's from. That was due to insurrection in the United States. Civil unrest. And against race against race. Maybe pandemic, or as it was said to me by my Israeli friend that uh, has the connections with the intelligence community, cause a problem in this country here where the people themselves will run out of their own ammo. I don't know exactly what their plan will be, but I know that there are many of them still yet to come. All right. Now, in going to the video that I had done more recently, uh, this one here, this was done in July, July 29th. This is when I had the new source. This was our theme engineer, all right? And I speak about asteroids being alleged in this video. Let's go to 145. Listen to what I say here. Uh, I just felt really impressed on my heart recently to go in there and look and run the word asteroids in there 
because I feel like somebody was riding on it. And of course, you know, naturally thousands of people are riding. But uh, I, Robert's email seemed to just catch my eye. So I opened his email and I began to read it. And it really caught my attention. And so we, I touched base with him that same day. And uh, so the kind of the rest is history. So I'm going to turn this over to Brother Robert a little bit uh, to talk to you a little bit, tell you about his background. And oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong video. It's this video here, new source. This, I'm sorry, July 19th. I did have the date right. Hang on. One minute, 45. So has gone even deeper into information uh, that they were privy to about this. I, I have to say, alleged or possible disaster of asteroids that are coming. And I feel like that each of us as individuals, we need to pray ourselves and seek the Lord to know what we should do for our own families. As those of you that know us, know us more personal as well, especially when this whole pandemic of Corona began, we were looking to get out of Florida, not so much because of a possibility of an asteroid strike, but because the fact if they shut down the grid, you lose power, if they stop you from having water or something like that, and their Corona uh, virus pandemic of making sure you can't go anywhere we needed to get out of Florida to find a place where we could grow food or something again clarifying the facts on this okay um, let's see at the 11 minute mark I, forget, I can't quite read my notes on what I said there but let's just look and see what we got here The timelines were disclosed to him then. Luckily, the timeline was somewhat inaccurate as certain dates have passed and nothing happened. All right. Uh, okay. And the reason why I wanted this part here to come uh, out is because he shared with me originally they believed this was going to happen back in 2010. That was a scientist. Uh, and he said, but it did not happen. Things did not materialize with this they were actually wrong on it and i've constantly tried to bring things like this out so people under say under excuse me so people would understand we don't know for certain anything on this but do i believe that these things are going to happen or they could happen i do believe something is going to happen why because i already know the bible has said about these things that were they're going to happen all right so anyway let's see uh Let's go to ver uh, 20, excuse me, it's 20 minute mark in this video here. I forget exactly what's here on this, but we'll listen to it. Already that uh, the September, now this is their, this is what they're telling me. I, I can't say this for sure, but they were telling me that come September, there would not be anybody on the planet that doesn't know that we are in serious trouble. Did you, did you just hear what I said there? Did you notice what I said about September? Okay, this is what they're telling me. As I stated, I can't say this. That's what they say. Listen to it again. About, they have also confirmed that yes, indeed, and I've shared this with you already, that uh, the September, now this is, their, this is what they're telling me. I, I can't say this for sure, but they were telling me that come September, there would not be anybody on the planet that doesn't know that we are in serious trouble. Now, that's what Glenn said to me directly. You know. All right. So as I stated there, they say it. I, didn't, I can't say it because I don't know. All right. Uh, but I will tell you one thing. Have we, seen the, have we seen the storms? Have we seen the rise in earthquakes? Have we seen an increase in asteroids? Has the United States government set up uh, uh, some kind of a agency to, to deal with near-Earth objects? And like I said, I, I know first, not firsthand, but I, I do know a privy of, of, of what they're doing myself. I do know what goes on with this agency here. You know, like I said, do, do, do we have, is there evidence out there 
that supports, uh, you know, increased number of asteroids. We've, we we share that information with you here. Uh, let's see here. You know, just in this article here, just in 2020 alone, first four months, double the number of near-Earth asteroids. All right. Did we did we see? As I was told that we would have an increase in hurricanes activity, yes, we did. Did we see the storms with over 100 mile per hour winds blowing up there in Nebraska and those areas there? Yes, we did. Not once, twice. Uh, have we seen earthquake rise? Well, just like in the case of Yellowstone, this is back in September, 100 earthquakes. Not to mention all the other earthquakes that, th that we have constantly. You know, what? Well, let's see, USGS, latest earthquakes. Let's just take a look at it and see real quick. We'll just, we'll just, you know, you can see them all the time. Look at there. Are we seeing it? Sure we are. Look at there. Japan, 5.1. Just had an earthquake there, 4.8 uh, in Mariana. Uh, look what's going on over here in the United States. Like crazy. Not big, though. San Andreas is constantly getting hit. And I hear there's some kind of crack down in Mexico that's running all the way up into uh, California. Haven't had a chance to look into that yet. I just heard about that uh, this uh, earlier this evening. So everywhere. Constant. Constant. Alaska. Again, 4.9. All over the place. Are we seeing it? Yes, we are. Did Jesus say it? Yes, he did. All right, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to point out before we before we end the broadcast. I apologize for the link of this, friends, but you know we just deal with all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, of nonsense that goes on out there, um, you know. And again, this was this is in the video also there uh, the the one I did there in July nineteenth. Here we go. Uh, this is where another source, this wasn't a source, actually, this is actually from uh, um, one guy was telling me we'd see 200 mile per hour winds. Oh, no, no, I take it back. No, it was the source that, uh, uh, that's the contractor for the Pentagon. He had actually shared that with me. 200 mile per hour winds, right? And then I've had other people confirm that, oh, yeah, that's going to actually happen. I, I don't know, right? And, and again, I clarify on this one as well. Let's see if I got it at the right spot there. Okay, let's try it. Actually collapse. The poles will shift. So what this is about? when we will see upwards to 200 mile an hour and even higher winds for about the space of six hours on the planet. Are these things true? I can't really say, friends. But I know the sources that I have are reliable men, reliable women that know the things that they're speaking about. Okay. So the thing is, for me, I have believed a lot of the things. I can't say, though, for sure, but I've believed it because I feel like that the, the sources that I have, I believe, are credible. But I have over and over and over tried to clarify, I don't know for sure. I don't set dates, all right? I don't even like getting into this whole subject. I never wanted to be into the Planet X thing or any of that kind of stuff. You know, when I first spoke with, with uh, Paul at the conference that he had down there, I didn't, I didn't even want to go do that. I just wanted to give it to him, let him do it. That's, that's his cup of tea. But I got into this issue because my first source, who's a good friend of mine, I really believe that he wanted people to be aware of things that are coming. And I wanted to share that with you guys. This is why I reached out to everyone. And this is one of the main reasons why I said so much about witness about Jesus Christ to everybody you possibly can. We're running out of time. All right. And I was even with the flat earth community, really trying to reach out to them as well with kindness and with love. But instead, you know, you get treated like dirt. Anyway, I've done everything I can to try to uh, express this, to update you guys on what's going on. I apologize for the length of this video. 
Uh, it's 1.30 in the morning right now for me, but I felt it needful to address this issue. Um, so we thank you and thank you for your kindness uh, and taking the time to listen to this tonight. Good evening.